God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your giving. Um, we're doing whatever we can to keep the air conditioners turned off um, uh, so that uh, we don't run the power bill up. It's just really expensive this time of year. And I know that if you give what God puts on your heart to give, the need will be met and everything will be hunky-dory and okie-dokie. All right? Amen. We try to be careful with everything that we're doing. God is good. Um, Rawl said he wasn't going to require me to sing today. He said he, said he wasn't going to request me to sing. Sometimes I take requests and sometimes I sing anyway. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Spells the end of sin. 
But his desire was to have a nation that served the living God, not a bunch of idols, and not a religion full of sexual deviancy. The worship of the Baals was about as corrupt as you could get. What we know about it. Child sacrifice. The same ugly spirit that is in America today and in this bill in Arizona they're trying to pass this next November that allows you to put your babies anytime you want to. We need to pray. And we need to seriously pray. Because disaster is on our horizon. And if we don't pray we will see things get really bad. I, I hate to say it, but America is not the same America I grew up in as a kid. It's just not the same. The thinking, the people, the honoring the parents and mothers and fathers and those that are in authority and going to church is a bizarre activity to most of our country. And I want to tell you that if America doesn't turn around, we're headed for disaster. We are. Amen. And the prayers of God's people can mitigate that disaster. Amen. 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 Preach it. Yes, amen. 
and there, there's two aspects to this. One is to avoid the judgment of God on our nation. And to stop the severity of the judgment. And another is to pray for God's wisdom of what we should do. I heard a story from missionaries in China and when Mao came in with the Communist Party and took over and changed the currency, people literally brought wheelbarrows of money to the church asking if they could do anything with it. And the fact of the matter was it had no value to anybody. And I, I want to share with you if there was ever a time that we needed to be able to start hearing and learning to hear the voice of the Lord, it is today. Amen. Because God knows how to take us through any emergency. Yes. He knows how to give us wisdom of what we should do and how we should do it. Because He is God and He knows. He knows what's coming. He knows what's ahead. And He knows how to prepare us for whatever we must face. Um, Jeremiah was caught up in the midst of a bunch of people that called him a traitor. They were wanting to kill him uh, because he told them, told the king, he says, you're not going to win. Nebuchadnezzar was going to tear you up. And the king wouldn't listen and called him a traitor. But God preserved him. At one point, they lowered him into a well and left him there stuck in the mud. But he made it out. Amen. Jeremiah did not have an easy life ever, as far as I can read. <laughs> but he was a prophet of God and anointed. And God took him through it. That's all I can say. I'm not sure what happened to him because he drug him to Egypt against his will. This life is not our heaven. This life is not where your fulfillment is. And when we start worshiping our possessions, our position, our bank account, our investment portfolio, the house that we live in, and it becomes a pseudo-God to us, we are in danger. The only thing that we should worship and enjoy is our God in heaven. Amen. Amen. Because everything else can be taken from us. Amen. We can lose it all in a moment. When I grew up, my grandfather had a cabin on Mount Lemon. And it was just always there. We would go up and loft in the summertime, sometimes in the wintertime, and just enjoy the different temperature from this oven we live in. <laughs> Didn't spend a lot of time there, but it was always there. And 
when I was pastoring, I didn't have an awful lot of time to spend up there because I was here. But there was a fire that came on Mount Lemon. And I went up there and looked at the remains. And I had a realization of what nothing looks like. <laughs> because all that was left was a heap of ash. It melted the glass. We had a television up there. We couldn't find it. We found one little transformer core. It melted glass, it melted metal. Total memories all gone. Memories I had all my life. They literally started building it when I was born. It was my grandparents' dream to spend the retirement years up there in the cool. But it's interesting, my grandmother got sick with what they would call Alzheimer's today and they were never able to enjoy it. And folks, I want to tell you something. It's vanity to put your value on anything except the Lord. Amen. You're going to be disappointed. <laughs> Because this world will not provide you with the joy and the peace and the satisfaction that your soul creates. You were designed to be a child of God. Amen. You were designed to have a purpose. Yes. Every believer is called to a function, to a job, to a ministry. And all believers are called to worship together. Amen. And to pray. And to stay in God's Word. When we, instead of setting our affection on things above, we are setting ourselves up for vast disappointment. Yes. Do I believe in wisdom? Yes. Do I believe in saving for retirement? Yes, I do believe in those things. I've tried to do those things. I think it's wisdom. Solomon says, look at the ant. Learn from the ant under your feet. The insignificant creature constantly storing food. You got to be smarter than an ant. Why? Because our fulfillment is in the Lord. Uh, let me say something. We got our eyes so much on this worldly system, our possessions and other things that we have. And, and boy, I just love 
getting into a shower and turning the water on and being able to have a shower. Amen. Amen. I'm glad I'm not building a campfire outside with some kind of a pot or a kettle and dipping water and trying to wash myself. That is an alternative, but it's not one I would enjoy. I enjoy the good things that God's given us. But my eyes need to be on the things of heaven. Luke 6, 38, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And then the other things will get added in there. The word says, Set your affection on things above. Whew. You say, Why is this important, Brother Stoll? We enjoy sermons about God's blessing, multiplication, healing, and all the other things that all of us preachers like to talk about. We enjoy those. And if a pastor has a constant diet of nothing but God's blessing upon you, and it's always this message, People flock in. They love every Sunday to hear this message about prosperity. What's the problem with that? It's not untrue. But when your eye is on the prosperity, your health, your blessing, instead of on God, when you lose your cabin, your health, your bank account, your prosperity, you lose your faith. And then the devil comes and says, well, God did this to you. And I want to share with you in this life, we are guaranteed nothing. Living for God is infinitely better than living any other way. Amen. Amen. Infinitely better. Amen. And if you're a Christian, the more you live for Jesus, the better things are going to be for you. Amen. 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 You're going to build walls against the enemy in your life you're going to be blessed in various ways. And the more you do for God, the more you're going to be blessed. And God's going to lead and guide you. And the blessing of the Lord is going to be upon your life because there's a blessing on those that serve God. No question about it. But I don't roam tomorrow. Now we're all just got older. <laughs> but I'm staying the same. <laughs> Penny's reminding me that September's coming. <laughs> huh? You get the same color you there too. My yeah, well reminds me of the color my I got this when I turned 40. It's from the antique pharmacy. Over the hill pills. And directions. Take two pills daily as needed to control advanced stages of fossilistic fantasy. <laughs> Aboriginal aerob aerobics, aerobics, prehistoric pickling, 
medieval Methu Methuselistic maladies and other awesome side effects of being over the hill. <laughs> Warning, these may be out of date too. <laughs> I got that when I turned 40. That was 26 years ago. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Not quite. 25. 36. 35 years ago. We'll get the math eventually. I need to take a couple pills, I guess. <laughs> and you know we used to have this plaque on the wall that says soon this life will all be past only what's done for Christ will last Amen. for me to live is Christ. Amen. 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 We need to focus on living for Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. We need to focus on whatever we can say to encourage somebody to heaven. I said hi to my neighbor on the way to church this morning. And I just said I'm trying to encourage everybody I can to go to heaven. And he didn't want to hear the false plan of salvation, but just a word, just a word, just a word. And as God's kids, if, if we will focus on the kingdom, the kingdom, our life will be full. Amen. Because when we focus on God's kingdom and witnessing and inviting people to church and blessing people and doing things, as a result of that, we bring blessing into our life. And the more you involve yourself with God's kingdom and blessing God's kingdom, the more you're going to be blessed. But you'll be blessed with a different satisfaction than this world has. Our blessing and our joy comes when we pray for somebody and we see God heal them. Isn't that right, Pam? Amen. Glory to God! Yay, God! Our blessing comes when we keep talking to somebody about Jesus and they finally receive the Lord. You say, how long does it take? It takes until they say yes. How many years? What difference does it make? If you get them to heaven, that's great. Maybe you will die before they receive Jesus, but the words that you speak into their life are life to them. Yes, amen. Amen. The word of the Lord will not return void. When we plant the living word of God in somebody's heart, it lives with them. And you say, yeah, but, but so and so, they used to go to church and now they don't anymore. Just keep praying for them. Amen. Because once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, once you know the truth, it will bug you living for the devil. That's right. Amen. Amen. I'm 
after deviating from four pages of scriptures. I want you, <laughs> but there is a scripture on this page that I'm going to use. First John 3, 9. Let's go there so you know I believe the Bible. I want you to look at this. And in the sixth verse, it says, Whosoever abides in him does not sin, and it should say practice sin. Whoever sins or practice sins has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins or practices sin is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's what Jesus came to do. Now look at verse 9. Whoever has been born of God does not sin or in the great practice sin for his seed remains in him and he cannot Amplified says keep practicing sinning because he's been born of God when you receive Jesus there is a divine implantation of an eternal spiritual DNA yes. into you and you become a new person yes. in Jesus. Yes. And you no longer can enjoy what you used to enjoy. Yes, yes. thank you, Lord. And when you are born again, there is a divine DNA put in your spirit and in your soul. Your body has still got problems. And don't ever trust it. Don't turn your back on your body. It'll get you. Your flesh is your enemy. Amen. 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 I've been working on getting less flesh. <laughs> but your fleshly man is your enemy. Your earthly desires and, and stuff will get you into trouble. That's what Satan uses to drag you into difficulties because he knows with that old nasty hook of sin, if he can get it into your flesh, he can drag you into places you don't want to go. Amen. He's a nasty devil. And he hates you. He hates every human. Because when he looks at humanity, he sees the image of God stamped on every person. His weapon is sin because there's nothing he likes better than to see humans destroy themselves. And think they're having fun. And if he can bring sickness and disease and destruction into your life it just makes him so happy but God but God yes. <laughs> but God yes. while we were yet sinners yes. he 
done for us. Amen. Come on. So look on the previous page, and it says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know Him. To the world, you're going to be weird. They don't know you. What kind of a strange creature wants to go to church and pay their tithes and talk to people about Jesus? But that's our food. That's what quickens us. That's what makes us alive. I dare you, go talk to somebody about Jesus. And see how you feel. Talked to a guy that was down, he, he, he didn't go to our church. But the church he went to believed in salvation. It was a work. We were stuck in this. <clears throat> what they called the residue plant. It was a place that they tried to make things out of acid mud. That was a leftover of the process of a smokeless smelter. And needless to say, the acid in the mud ate everything. Hydrochloric acid is about as destructive a stuff as you can mess with. It eats stainless steel. It dissolves copper. Nasty. And I sit down there with Leroy and I start talking about Jesus. You want to feel good? Start talking about our Lord. I used to sing that song, Tell Me the Story of Jesus, right on my heart every word. <laughs> Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that's ever been heard. Talk to me about Jesus. That is my food. That is my Savior. That is my Lord. That is my family. Whew. Jesus is your family. He is your Lord. And He is your family. If you want, and, and what we need to survive hard times is placing our affection on Him yeah. instead of on this world. Yes. And we re need to realize that if we build a cabin, it could become ash. Amen. If we build a tower, it could fall down. If we build have a nice car, it'll break down someday. And if you go to a dealership to fix it, it'll be really expensive. A hundred dollar bill has now become thousand dollar bills.
And a thousand dollar transmission has become a ten thousand dollar transmission. This world will always disappoint. But Jesus never fails. Jesus will not fail. So what if I have to go through this? What if I have to go through that? You're going to go through it with the Lord. You're not going to go through it by yourself. Jesus is going to carry you through whatever you're facing. But what if this happens to me? What if that happens to me? You've got a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Your earthly friends, they could leave you, they could betray you. Believe me, I know all about that. But Jesus will not fail you. Amen. He will always be there when you call, when you pray. And what we need to do is develop a greater dependence on Him and a lesser dependence on this world system. Amen. Amen. And seek the peace of the Lord instead of the peace of the stock market. Because it goes up Sometimes it goes way down. But Jesus is the same. Amen. God cares about every one of you. So I'd like to ask you this morning, would you just gather around the front and let's close this service. And let's just join together in prayer and say, Jesus, would you help us to get our eyes on you? Would you help us to focus on you? Would you make us a body of believers that is wholly dedicated to seeking your face? That we would function together as a body of believers and pray for one another and care for one another and and that together we would set our affection on Jesus. Sometimes we sing songs and we're blessed by the music, but we should be blessed because of our worship yes. to the Lord. Amen. Sometimes we pray and we give God a job list instead of spending time in worship to Him. Lord, today we join as a body of believers and God, we come to you and say, God, help us to get our eyes on the things of this world. Help us to get our eyes off of this world. And help us to get our eyes on you. Lord, this world is going to be burned up someday. There will be nothing left of it. But God, I pray that, Lord, you would Help us to get our eyes on that which is eternal, that cannot fade away, that cannot fail, that will never go away. God, that the kingdom of God will continue forever, but that this world will not. Lord, help us to get our eyes on you in a way that is new and afresh. God, give us a vision of the heavenlies. Give us a vision of what is ahead of us instead of a vision of possessions and acquisitions and accomplishments of our own. Let us look unto Jesus. Hallelujah. The author and finish of our faith. And God, let us look at the joy that is set before us in heaven and the world that will come to you because we've served you. And let us endure our cross and despise whatever shame we face. 
that we may be involved in your eternal plan of salvation. And we thank you, Lord, because you are God. And you have redeemed us, and you have bought us, and you've adopted us, and you have changed us. In the glory of the image of Christ, we are changed. God, let us, I pray every person here would have a God moment this week. Yes, they would experience your presence at a, at a time they don't expect it. And Lord, that your blessing would be upon them in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, we pray. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. God bless you this morning. Thank you for coming to church. Be in the Happy birthday. Thank you. I'm glad you're catching up with me.